At the end of Thornton Wilder's famous play, Our Town, the main character, Emily, is sitting in the graveyard at the end of her life, having been granted one last look at the earth that she's about to leave behind. And looking down at her, looking out at her family, she says to the narrator, I can't bear it. They're so young and beautiful. Why do they ever have to get old? It can't go on, she says. It goes so fast. We don't have time to look at one another. I didn't realize all that was going on in life, and we never really noticed. And she says, oh, earth, you're too wonderful for anybody to realize you. Do, do any human beings ever realize life? while they live it every every minute and the narrator turns to her and says no saints and poets maybe they do some and then emily takes one last look and turns to the narrator in the graveyard and says i'm ready to go back now saints and poets maybe the word saint is a curious word we think of saints in religious iconography depicted as paintings looking straight at you with a halo of light around their head. Or we use the word in conversation to describe somebody that is unflappable. He or she has the patience of a saint, we say, not usually while talking about me. But I wonder if Emily is onto something here. Maybe a saint is someone who does fully realize and embody the love of God and of this world during their lifetime in a way that many of us only get to fully realize in the next lifetime. There are lots of people in my life, lots in yours, I suspect, that come to mind when I think of this definition of a saint. But the one I'm thinking about this morning is my friend Betty. Before I was a pastor, I was a teacher. And when I was still a student teacher and had no idea what I was doing, Betty and I had the same time in the day set aside for preparation and grading. And I would sit across from her in the high school library reading papers. Betty was a special education teacher. She worked with students for whom the goal was not necessarily to go on to a four-year university, but to know that they were loved, that they were capable, that they were valued. And one day I walked into the library during the preparation period when the ninth graders had just beat me up. And I flopped down in the chair and Betty said, what's wrong? And I said, this is so hard. I don't know what I'm doing. They're so mean. The principal is so mean. And I know that I can do this. I just wish I could skip this part because it is too hard, I said. And Betty put her pencil down and said, I have diabetes, and I don't think I have a lot more left in me here at the school or here in this world. And so I want you to know that you should never want to skip parts. You should never want to skip even the hard parts, she said, because they're part of the gift that you have been given. Now finish grading your papers. And the next year, when I was at Betty's memorial service, the big Portuguese-speaking Catholic church in town, we read those words from the creed that say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. My voice caught a little bit on the phrase, the communion of saints. In our tradition, in Christian tradition, we identify individual people as saints, but we also use that language, the communion of saints. It reminds us that we are all interconnected. Those who are, 
don't think they can go on and those who are nearing the ends of their journeys. Communion is a form of togetherness in this world and the next that is tied to forgiveness. The very next line in the creed, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. It's tied to resurrection, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Communion of saints is about knowing that something lasts even after we die and that none of us, despite what we tell ourselves, can really get through those hard parts alone. It's in our liturgy too here at this church after the offering today as we do every Sunday. We pray a prayer that starts with the words, God, we know that we are not self-made. In truth, we belong to you. This is the communion of saints. We live here in this world, though. It's a broken world. It's far from what God's dream holds for the world. And the scriptures you heard, Jim, this morning give us a fuller picture of what the saints help us glimpse. A time where all are fed richly, at a banquet that includes rich food and good wine. A time when God will wipe away all of our tears and God will dwell with us as close as a neighbor does in the city. In this scripture, all of the things that might keep us separate, the wide oceans, the impossibly tall mountains will be drawn near to each other. We'll It's as if we will get to see the horizon itself and not have the horizon constantly moving one more step away from us. Like Emily in the play Our Town, I find it almost impossible to realize the nearness of God to me every minute of every day. I'm a pretty poor saint, truth be told, and not the greatest poet. And this is why I pray. So often during my days, there is no time, or at least it feels like there is no time. I'm running to work. I'm running to handle someone's crisis. I'm grabbing someone's forgotten backpack. I'm paying bills before they are due. And it feels like there just isn't time to pause and notice and remember. And so I pray, not always during those moments, but before them as preparation, after them as a conclusion, as a way of widening my vision to see all of the parts of God's horizon. Right now, at the end of the day, my prayer looks like this. I go out on my porch and I look up at the sky And I turn my head as far as I can and slowly turn it toward the other side. We live in Seattle, so there's not always stars, but there is always more sky. There is always more to see, more neighbors to see than are in my immediate vision. At the end of the day, standing on my porch, I let God wipe away some of my tears knowing that tomorrow will have troubles of its own. I reimagine my day with gratitude. and I bring back to life those moments, moments like that conversation in the library with Betty, those moments that I am often too preoccupied to fully experience. I remember standing there on my porch in the dark, that God is lifting the shroud from my shoulders. Not just someday, but even now, God is wiping away my tears. As the scripture said, God is making God's home here among people, not just at the end of time someday, but right here, right now, with us. And so today, even if it's just for an hour or two, we realize life 
while we are still living it. We give thanks. We remember. And even just for an hour or two, all of us can be poets. And all of us can be saints. Amen.